When we talk about the big game, we have to talk about the most important thing about the big game, the snacks, right? And since I, in the kitchen, are kind of like a, a penguin trying to send an email, uh, I had to bring in someone really, really special from Top Chef and owner of Rosemary here in Chicago in the Fulton Market, Joe Flynn. Hey, thanks for having me. All right, so we're going to make some uh, snacks for the big game. A couple snacks to do today. Uh, for me, one game day, got to have nachos. I'm a huge nachos guy. Uh, I think everybody is. So we're going to get that going first. And the other thing we're going to do, and I think, you know, maybe it's just the Midwest in me, but I consider ribs a snack. If you can hold it in one <laughs> hand, that's a snack. Like, you know, it's science. Now, I heard this about, and tell me if this is true, there's a rule when it comes to nachos that the perfect nacho is supposed to be able to hold all of the ingredients. Is that true? I agree with that. Yeah, okay. I agree with that. So, so we can put a, a whole cow on one nacho. Yeah. <laughs> So we're going to do, this is kind of an Italian take on nachos for this. So we're going to start off cast iron, get it going, get a little oil going. Uh, I have some loose Italian uh, hot ground sausage. We're going to get that going, get that seared off all nicey, nice, nice in our pan. Now this is an Italian, because your restaurant is Italian-Croatian, right? Yeah, we're an Italian-Croatian restaurant, so we call it Adriatic drinking food. So maybe we'll have to put this one on the menu. So this isn't on the menu. This could end up on the menu. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, there's no nachos on the menu quite yet. But hey, who knows? Who knows? Maybe game day special. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. Right. And is, is this a, is this spicy? This, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, bring, bring yeah. It, it's got some heat. Putting a couple little layers to the heat. So one with the sausage, and then we're gonna do instead of doing like pickled jalapenos or anything like that, we're gonna do jardinera on top because you know we're in Chicago. We gotta, yeah, yeah. We gotta, we gotta represent being hometown boys. Uh, sausage is going. While that's going, we're going to make our cheese sauce. So I got a pot over here, a quart of cream. We're just going to take this. We're going to cook that down by maybe about half, maybe a little less, you know. Kind of eyeball it. I can be, I, I'll be your assistant, but like I said, Penguin typing an email, so well, walk me through it. All right, Penguin. <laughs> uh, let's grab that cilantro, and you just start picking leaves of that. Filling up our bowl that didn't have sausage in it. All right. We'll get that going. Gives it a little flavor. So I'm just kind of breaking this up as I go. And so this is instead of doing, you know, your kind of traditional ground beef, chorizo, or whatever, you know, you put on top of your nachos. Pulled pork, if you're one of those guys, you know, you can, I don't know. I'm a big fan of the pulled pork, like a barbecue pulled pork. Yeah, over the nachos. It's a move. It's a move. It's a heavy move, though. But I wanted to make this. I wanted to make this our own. I wanted this to be a me and Scotty thing, so we could cherish. Oh, uh, we have a we have a thing. We have a thing. We have a thing. Well, I think it's fun because I, I think if people are going to be able to grab this recipe and make, or maybe even make their own interpretation of it throughout Chicago land. This is something that uh, becomes. Chicago tradition and or a new Chicago tradition starts today. Right. You heard it. So well, that is going. One of my favorite foods in the world is ribs. Yeah. These are ribs we do at the restaurant. We do these pompanella style. So pompanella style is uh, it's a style of rib that's from Molise, which is where my family's from in Italy. Okay. Um, and it's kind of like their closest version of barbecue. So we rub these in a bunch of paprika, garlic, all that. Slow cook them, chill them, and then we're gonna finish them on the grill. So these, it's you know, so while there's the dry a work, rub there's, on there, is yeah, that, yeah. Okay. So while there's a lot of work behind this, it makes for a really easy you know, game day pickup, because now they're cooked, they're ready to go, your, you know, crew comes over, throw them on the grill, yeah. we're rocking, so. So it's a very kind of a, like Memphis does a lot of dry rub, right? Yeah. Barbecue kind of stuff. And so this is in a, what, what is, what are the spices that are on there? So paprika, uh, sweet and hot, garlic, uh, salt and black pepper, really, really simple, straightforward. Cool. Um, and then we made a sauce for this, and this is a Calagrian chili agrodolce. You smell that? So agro meaning sweet and sour. Yeah, really sweet. So spicy, so it's uh, Calabrian chilies are cooked out with sugar and vinegar, um, and it's just gonna make that really, really sticky, nice, nice uh, rib glaze, as we call it. And these ribs will just, what, are there, is there mistakes that we should be looking out for here when we're cooking these? You know, I'm gonna try not to light them on fire, but <laughs> if, you, if you cook them first time right, you That's... should be in really good shape. You know what I mean, if you let them, you know, go low and slow so the yeah. meat gets nice and tender, but doesn't try out on you, you're in business. That's how I cook. I light it on fire. Everything is a uh, marshmallow for s'mores, right? <laughs> to me, that's how I cook. 
What's a what's a super common thing used to cook in in the Croatian um, culture? Uh, one of the most common things, you know, uh, I think is like the risotto, or it's like Italian risotto, um, and it's like a big like party food. You know, you see that a lot. Roast lamb is huge, so we do like uh, like roast lamb with Swiss chard. They call it blipa. Um, we do that at the restaurant where we take whole lamb shoulders, we char them over the grill, like roll them, then we slow braise them, and then we pick them up, we grill them again. So it kind of has that quality of like being at, you know, like a lamb roast and getting that cut off the spit to it. Oh, oh that's great. Look at those. That was all so, great. Do we need more? <laughs> Let me see. That's perfect. That'll be enough. If it's not, you're not coming back tomorrow. No, I'm fired. All right, so. We'll do a little kind of slawy relish to go on top. So treviso, green cabbage, pickled onions. I like a little bit of the liquid from the pickled onions in there. Ooh. Just gives it a little of that kind of sweet and sour tang. A little bit of yogurt. So I love the yogurt in here instead of like mayonnaise or anything else because it gives it like a tangy, you know, like that same kind of buttermilk quality to mm. it. So if you're thinking, yeah, fatty, 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 yeah. right? Pork ribs, you got heavy. We're gonna bring some heat to it and such. So the sauce is spicy also? Sauce is going to be spicy. So you want something to cut through, right? Drizzle, drizzle. Yeah, so that has like a almost a jelly kind of texture to it. Yeah, right? it's real like lacquery, like sticky. Like. Yeah. Like, so that's more of the sweet and sour sauce you were talking yep, about, right? Exactly. And so if I was having a crowd over, I'd just do a big plate of these in the middle of the table and just let everybody, I love things, you know, especially at somebody's house, you know, you're at a party, it's like, there's nothing worse when there's food there and you're like, I don't even know how to eat this. Like, what am I going to do with this? I need a fork and knife. Like, I don't want that. I want somebody to pick up, grab it. Dig in and go. So we'll put up those for a minute. Uh, will you open those chips? We get our chips nice and toasty. Oh, really? The wonderful <laughs> El Ranchero chips. Yeah. Perfect for nachos for the big game. Was that good? That was good? Sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, let's throw those in the oven real quick and nice and toasty toasty. And the oven's what, about 325? Yeah, we're about 325. You're just getting them hot. You know what I mean? You don't want to go hot sausage, hot cheese, and cold chips, and then it's like, what are we doing? Yeah, well, I'm bummer chips. Yeah. All I, like right. to, I like to be the guy that throws the towel over the shoulder. Doesn't have to do anything, but you look the part. So we're going to throw in some mozzarella. Start blending this up. You start getting the power tools out in the kitchen, yeah. that's, that's when you know it's real. Parmigiano as well. And we're chatting cheese, so this gets some dice and thick. You know, the consistency you want is the cheese sauce. I think there's different schools of thought on cheese sauce, but, you know, in my opinion, it's always going to thicken up as it cools. So I like it a little much thinner. Make you happy. That makes me happy. That, yeah. Did you do a better job, Dev? I don't know. I don't know. Well, yeah, toasty, I mean, warm. Let me know if you want some pointers later. Yeah. So then we're just gonna. This is when they officially become Chicago nachos, right? So what I love about the Jardere is a couple things. One, you know, the heat of it. You add a little spice to your nachos. But also, that kind of pickled quality that Jardinera has. So you get that acidity, um, like you would from like a pickled jalapeno or a pickled red onion that you would get on, you know, your nachos. That's it, Whoa. you know what I mean? You can adjust it to what yeah. you want. You can add things. You can throw some avocados on this. You can do the sour cream. I think with the fun, you until you get enough of the creaminess that you don't necessarily need it. But hey, make it yours. I just think for me, for this, this is like, that, and it was so easy to make too. Right. And, and there's a, and a lot of it. It's not. It's enough for right. You know, a you know whole yeah, party. I think that's the biggest trick is you want you know for a big game you want things for a crowd that are easy to make that you can put out and can sit out right where it's Great like point. that you're not like in and out of the kitchen all day because you want to watch the game you want to hang out you want to have a couple of pops you know what I mean see what's going on but like this kind of solves those problems the ribs too big platter them they're out there boom you're done. That everybody else helps with cleanup because oh this is so great we'll wash the dishes and you're like oh thanks great do they I'll put do my, they though I'll put my feet up and have a beer <laughs> this is amazing and so boom that's it there we go I broke a chip 
Here we go. Mmm. Salty, sweet, spicy. I did a great job. 